So yesterday I had the opportunity to play in a charity golf tournament and I come up once a year and play with my friend who doesn't really play. So he invites me so that I can like kind of carry the team. And I do it because he's my friend. And anyways, one of the things that I always notice when you're playing in like a charity tournament with people who don't play a lot, first thing out of the gate is their mentality. And one of the things you have to know about peak performance, like cardinal rule, peak performance happens from a totally positive place in your head. One negative thought can destroy a peak performance. Have you ever been before a little lake or a body of water and you're afraid you're going to go in it and the next thing you know, you're in it. So we have to guard our minds against all negativity and come from a totally positive place of belief. And so from the first tee, this one guy was like, well, I have really bad arthritis and I can hardly play. And I used to be able to play, but now I can't even hit the ball 150 yards. And, you know, I've got back problems and blah, 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 blah. And, you know, everything was just so sabotaging from the first tee. And that stuff, hearing that stuff is like an anathema to me. It's like, no, I have got to change the atmosphere and get my team in the right head space. And normally this takes like some time. I don't let her know I'm doing it, but I say it. I say, oh, not today. Today's gonna be your day. Well, I'm always so good putting and blah, blah, blah. Not today. Today's gonna be a great day. And to get on every hole and say, I just announce it. Hey guys, this is a birdie hole. This is a birdie hole. And it's amazing to me how we at least don't start from a place of belief. That we stay somehow in this fixed mindset that everything is always going to be bad. You can change that because in order to perform your best, you have to be in a place of positive belief. It doesn't cost you anything more to believe versus not to believe. So finally, by the back nine, I had said it enough. This guy starts sinking pots. And he made a really good contribution to the team. And so then afterwards, I said, I could tell you really love the game. He said, yeah. I said, well, let me tell you three things you can do to like advance. Like you don't have to stay stuck in your misery. I said, you can get this functional product that has helped a lot of people I know who have arthritis in their hands, reduce their inflammation and, and virtually get rid of pain. Well, first he didn't want to hear about it. I'm like, I wrote it down for him. I said, secondly, you can do some stretching exercises. Like you can increase your range of motion just because you're griping that you're 70 years old and you can't move like you used to, doesn't mean you can't improve your movement. Hello, you know, and then thirdly, you know, I said something about a swing mechanic that, um, and showed him what he can work on in a very uh, functional drill to improve his swing. That's a growth mindset versus a fixed mindset. And then finally, I told my dear friend, I said, listen, next year, we're going to get some players on the team. And I expect you to come with at least a putting skill. Because he doesn't play. He like shows up and then I'm like the player, right? And I placed an expectation on him. And I said, the least you can do is practice your putting a month out. And work on your distance control. So that you can make a great or contribution to the team because he was all happy that like we finished eighth four back from the winners but I'm like eighth 
I didn't come to finish, eh? I came to win. And so I've begun to see, even with the players that I coach, is that champions place a demand on themselves. They place a demand on themselves. And those who aren't, or at least those who haven't tapped into their inner champion, have to wait for others to place the demand on them. I have a player right now whose father just texted me and he said, my son is playing the best I've probably ever seen him play, except for his putting today. He's doing this, 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 and this. And do you know why we're seeing a result with that son? Is because I placed a demand on him in my last coaching session. I said to him, I said, listen, that was the sloppiest round of golf that I have ever seen. You didn't have a pre-shot routine. Your head wasn't in the game. I don't know where the heck you were, but it wasn't in golf. I don't ever want to see that again. That ends today. He started tearing up. And of course, I don't do that from a place of judgment. I do it from a place of love. I'm placing a demand on his inner champion to come forward. So you, you have to place a demand on people. We don't place demands on people anymore in terms of, not from a judgment place, but from a, come on, you can do better than that. There's more inside of you. And I don't care if you're 16, like this student, or you're 66, or you're 76. I saw my mother releasing her potential while she was dying. She was learning golf at 85 years old. And she was given six months to live. And pulling at that potential caused her to live almost seven more years. Outlasted an operation on her heart. Why? Because we were developing the champion within, and it was breeding life in her. So don't tell me there's not more inside of you. But a champion places demands on herself. That's a spirit of excellence. So call yourself up higher. Call your family up higher. Do it from a place of love. Because both on and off the golf course, if there's anything we need more of today, it's a positive expectation that comes from belief of I will, I can, I believe. There was a time I was playing in a tournament in Florida, and I was playing with some high-level Air Force guys. One of the guys was a two-star general, and got him on the first tee, and it was the same thing. You know, there's always this kind of excuse of why, you know, maybe they may not play their best, and it's basically an ego stance, you know, but it's okay. So I was from the first hole. This is a birdie hole. So I hit a nine iron as a par three, about 10 feet from the pin, and we made birdie. Second hole. Guys, this is a birdie hole. Third hole, guys, this is a birdie hole. By the fifth hole, these guys who had a performance mindset, they all started believing. Like they started chiming in to what I was declaring. So by the sixth hole, everyone on the team had bought into this spirit of agreement. This is a birdie hole. And the general started sinking the putts. So I started calling him Birdie Man. Well, by the 12th hole, the Florida rain started coming. I mean, it was heavy. And in fact, it was so much wind, it was blowing my umbrella inside out. That was kind of an adjustment hole. It was the only hole where we like parred. Very next hole, guys, this is a birdie hole. One of the holes we eagled. And what was so amazing is that the winds came, the rains came, 
but the power of agreement in the power of unity with everybody on the team. That reality that this was a birdie hole was greater than the reality of the inclement impending winds and the rain. We won the tournament by two shots. That was profound. That was profound to me. Because what we spoke and what we believed became a greater reality than the winds and the rain and the bad weather that would naturally cause you to play more poorly. So I don't know where you're at today, but if it works for golf, it'll work for you. Peak performance happens from a totally positive place in your head. And I don't care if you play golf every day or you play golf once a year. You can step up to that first tee and say, today's my day. Because you never know what's on the other side of that belief.